Today we're gonna build one of these. This is the 533 Tiny Trainer. I got a race coming up in uh, Moberly, Missouri, and we're gonna be racing these bad boys. And I'm gonna show you how to build this one from ground up. So I've got, I'm gonna have two of them for the race. And so I built this one off camera so that I had a uh, down pad. I knew exactly how I was gonna assemble it. Now I'm gonna build a ne the next one on camera so you can see how to put together your Tiny Trainer. Um, all the parts, everything uh, that we're gonna be building here will be available in the description below if you choose to purchase all of that you know that's going to be affiliate links it's going to support the channel all that stuff but let's get back to it before we get too far into this video i just wanted to quick interject and kind of talk about the sponsor for this video and that is uh insta 360. um insta 360 is currently having their summer sale event um i apologize for the ad read but you know gotta pay the bills insta 360 is selling the 1r um, twin edition that comes with the 4k mod no, that's not the mod. That's the mod, the 4K mod, and the uh, the 360 for uh, I think fifty dollars off. So it's normally like 480. It's down to like 430. Uh, you get two cameras for the price of one. They're selling the Go for 160 dollars instead of 200. Again, this is my favorite little camera. Um, if you're interested in it at all for micro drones or racing drones or anything like that, uh, I've got a mount that I'm going to use it with the uh, actually the drone that we're making in this video um, that combines that perfectly. It's all for sale right now uh, for the summer sale. So please use the link in the description below to check out some of the options that are available. Again, apologize for the ad read. Got to do what you got to do. Thanks for hanging out. We'll get back to the video right now. First thing you're going to need is obviously your frame and all of the related components. Um, included in this one, you get the little baby Racer 4 canopy, just is so adorable because uh, I'm so used to the giant Racer 4. You've got the camera canopy here, you've got um, a plate to mount your VTX and antenna. Um, this is the bottom bit that is the battery holder, it's going to go on like that. Uh, and then you got your frame, the actual carbon fiber bits, some zip ties, and then all of the screws that you need to put the frame together. So super simple. Um, and uh, it, it's kind of a little daunting at first to figure out how to like get this thing to wrap right onto the frame. But once you do it once, it's pretty straightforward. So let's jump into the next. The default Tiny Trainer kit uses the uh, Nano camera. So I'm using the Runcam Nano 2, my, one of my favorite cameras. Um, I prefer the the mini or the micro version rather than the nano just because it's a little bit easier to work with for like five inch quads but for the tiny trainer you need nano size the props i'm going to use are these <clears throat> gem fan uh 31 or 3016 by 3 1.5 millimeter t-mount props uh you can see those like that i don't like this color but that was the only option i had available for motors we're using the zing uh, 1404 4600 kv version get your set of screws and then here's the zing motor looks super good like i love the little camo blue and black paint job with the it just feels so good and it's got that like curvy bell it's just it's, it's a great little motor we're using the tiny's leds um led kit uh for to get those that super sweet led look um, so it's got like one main plate and then a bunch of little ones and then little wire connectors to go between them. Super easy to use, uh, super easy to wire up. And they have a dump for the tiny trainer for LED um, so that you can just really quickly set up the, the LED uh, to, to run however you want. VTX is going to be the Unify uh, Pro Nano. Super, super tiny little, actually it looks like this, VTX. Um, super easy to work with. Uh, you just have to wa solder on your little button on there, and then it just, you yeah, super easy. Um, love this little VTX. I have it in most of my race builds, um, and so that's what we're going to use in this one. For flight control board and ESCs, we're using the Beta FPV um, V3 AIO, so it comes with some screws and connectors, and then here's the actual board. Then it's got a flight controller and four ESCs, and a pretty good um, wiring setup. I don't like how it's set up for the tiny trainer, um, and I'll kind of complain about that a little bit later, but it's a great little flight control board, um, and it's gonna work perfect for the tiny trainers, their recommended product. For our receiver, uh, because I fly Futaba, I'm gonna use the um, R2000 SBM, uh, it's a SFHSS. Uh, receiver it just has really long antennas so we'll have to do a little bit of antenna management with that uh, but this is my preferred uh, 2.4 gigahertz receiver 
So those are all the components that we're going to use. We'll get them all laid out um, and start building up the tiny trainer. The place I usually start with assembly is putting the motors on the frame. I just That's my favorite part to work on right away at the beginning. So that's what I do first. So we'll pull out the frame and then we'll just put each motor on. Um, I'm using this uh, wow stick, um, which is a great little electric screwdriver. It makes it really easy to work on micros especially. Okay, all motors are now on and assembled. We've got everything kind of cut a little bit shorter so that it's easier to manage. Uh, and now the next part that we have to put on is the battery cage, battery holder, uh, because the screws that are going to go into the flight controller also have to go through this. So we've got to put the, the flight controller screws on alongside of this um, and do this at the same time. So this is gonna go, we're gonna flip this upside down and then you're going to take your uh, battery holder and the V end here goes towards the back. And you kind of fold it over and you see these two little knobbies right here. Um, so that goes into that hole there on the outside. So this, 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 this. Take the longer screws from the uh, frame kit, fold this thing out, push it through the TPU, then push it through the bottom of the frame and then get one of these tiny little baby nylon uh, nuts started on it. So now it's attached and then flip it over and bend it in half and do the same thing on the other side and then tighten it all down. And then on the back you can see that there's two of these two more little holes. It kind of folds down and then you put screws through the bottom of that and then put the metal standoff on top of that. So we'll take one of our shorter frame screws and I like to add a washer on this step. Uh, it doesn't come with it but I've got these little washers from the uh, from Hobby Wing Motors left over. So I just like to add that between the screw and the TPU just to add a little bit of something to hold the TPU more in place. And you can see how that would help prevent the screw from slipping through. And then you'll do the same thing on the front. But I'm going to skip that for now because I'm going to get the flight controller on. And you'll see that once the flight controller is on, it gets kind of tricky to put everything in place. So you can see that we're basically making this uh, star pattern for the flight controller. You got this screw here and that screw there. So we need one through up here. Put on a nylon nut, crank it on down, and then do the same thing in the back. Okay, now we are ready to mount our flight controller. Um, I don't do the front standoffs on purpose yet because it gets kind of inconvenient to reach the pads on the front of the flight controller um, with those standoffs in place, so I'm going to do those later at a later step. So our flight controller came with these little rubber bobbins that have to go into these holes before you put it on, so just get those inserted first. Okay, we've got all of the bobbins installed now, and we can just seat this flight controller onto the chassis. Just be careful not to undo the hard work you've done of getting your bobbins in place. And then take the rest of your little nylon screws and put them in on top. Now we just have to wire up the motors. I just do them right down the line. Um, the pads on this flight controller are very, very close together, so use as little solder as you can um, to get it done because it, uh, it's pretty challenging if you uh, accidentally jump the pads.
after you install each motor, you can just give it a spin to make sure that it still is freewheeling spinning. Um, because if it's not, it won't uh, spin. Because that's a, it's a thing called FET drag. Um, if it's short, shorted across the pads, the motor won't turn at all. Um, but if it spins freely like that, then it's uh, good to go. And then repeat for each motor. All right, we've got the motors now installed, wired up, ready to go. Everything's spinning freely, so that is doing great. Um, the next thing I'm going to install is the receiver. This is our receiver, and then what I'm going to do is wrap these antennas up on the receiver so it's not so massively, so the antennas aren't so freaking long. We're going to take the heat shrink, put it over top. I probably don't need that much. Some more like that. And I'll keep those antennas a little bit more compact and out of the way. Just got to make sure that they don't hit that button in there. And then heat gun it down. <clears throat> and then we're just going to take our little uh, VTX piece. Put it down over top of the receiver so that it's all kind of locked in place there. And then you can see that once this uh, canopy goes on, it'll hold everything together really nicely like that. Actually, go ahead and use one of these uh, nuts from the flight controller. Hold that down in place. You can still see the button in there. The button is right there, so we can reach in and push the button uh, if we need when we need to bind it up. And then the receiver pads are up here. You've got ground 5 volt and then S bus um, in the front right. So we just have to solder it onto that. Now you can kind of see why I'm not a super fan of the way that this is laid out. The uh, the beta FPV board anyway. Because um, you have to reach the wire from the receiver all the way across the board rather than just running it right next to it. Which would be so much simpler. I just cut my fingernails this morning so I'm having trouble. Okay, that's the receiver wired up. Next, we will do the VTX. So we'll set the drone aside. Pull this out of its package. And be careful not to lose the button. There's a button there and then there's the VTX. Soldering on this button gets a little tricky. I usually try to find something that I can kind of mount, brace it with so that it stands up. And if you look really close, you can see actually it really highlights it there those two pads you gotta solder the button onto those two pads and so what I do is I brace it somewhere like that so I can stand it up and then I wet the pads I take the button Get a hold of it with some tweezers. <laughs> Heat the pad, touch the button to the pad, and it'll stay on. And then just add a little solder to each side. It's not great, but it gets the job done. And now you got a button. And then with this VTX, I like to mount the antenna backwards and then it's going to sit basically like that to go out the back so we can heat shrink it across there. It's starting to thunderstorm and the cat gets afraid. So then you just poke the antenna through and it will eventually be like that and that usually just takes some double sided tape. And then all the pads for the VTX are right here, um, which is pretty nice. So you just have to run them, run the wires right around the side and down onto the pads, like so. Okay, with the VTX wired up, the only thing really left to wire is the camera, but we first got to get it into this mount. Uh, so again, this is our Runcam Nano 2. The uh, You can see where the standoffs would be here. They're kind of on the top. 
you insert the camera face up from the back and this should just barely peek through the mount um, and that's how you'll help line up the screw holes. Okay, this camera's in the mount. Then we just need to make sure we have enough wire to run that all the way back, which we don't, so we'll have to extend our yellow wire, but we can run our power and ground to a closer pad. So we're gonna, we've got a ground right there on the top left corner, so we'll ground the camera there. Okay, and then there's a five volt down here. Right there. Five volt action. And then the camera wire has to run all the way across to the other side. I'll just leave it a little bit extra long for convenience. And it wires in right here. Camera's wired up. Give it just a twist or two. And now is a good time to put in the rest of the standoffs. So we just need a couple of the middle sized screws. Push it through the bottom of the TPU. And then screw on the standoff. And then with this beta board, I've had a little trouble mounting the camera thing, so I just got rid of the extra TPU down here at the bottom. It just doesn't quite fit with this flight controller, but it doesn't really need that. And then it fits all the way down just fine. Cool. So, camera's ready to go. Now we just have to do the LEDs. So with the LED system, you get four separate parts. You get the main plate with the connectors, and then you get four separate LED bars, with their own individual connectors. Um, and you just have to wire, there's three pads, ground, five volt, and uh, DI. You just need to wire up to each of those. Now this is designed to use the flight controller standoffs. So I just take one of the extra screws that came with the flight controller, screw it down a little bit of the ways, and then I put the I.O. board across the top of those standoffs, and then I put two more screws in to hold it in place. And then they wire into, on the bottom, or on the front left, there's three pads, LED, ground, 5 volt, you just have to wire them right into those. My 5 volt is shared with my camera, so that's a little bit inconvenient, but it's not the end of the world. So you got LED, ground, 5 volt, shared with the camera. Slip that camera back up on there. And voila, that is a full wiring system for the tiny trainer um, I recently purchased a smoke stopper I think people that are friends of the channel will know why that's kinda of funny um, but we'll stick that on it basically it will prevent uh, a catastrophic failure of components if I got any wiring wrong Then plug in this end And boom, they got VTX camera. LEDs are not on because they're not programmed yet. Um, and then receiver is also on down underneath there. So we'll just check to make sure we've got at least some basic video. Boom. Look at that. Now, unfortunately with this VTX, because it uses a different version of smart audio, you need a uh, 10K ohm resistor um, to make the smart audio work. Uh, I don't know if anybody really has these sitting around, but I do. Um, I got a little baggie of them. You can see the actual thing right here. That's the resistor. You can see there's a little brown band on one end there. That's the negative end. So I just take it, I give it a little bit of a bend on both ends. Cut off the excess. And this needs to go between the VTX ground 
and smart audio on any end. So I usually do it on the flight controller end because it's a little bit easier. And then if I ever have to swap the VTX, it's already there. And then I'm grabbing it with tweezers. And I put one end on the smart audio. The other end on the ground. And that's in place. And then I can just kind of bend it there so it's out of the way but it's attached nonetheless. So that's ready for programming. So I'm gonna take my dump from my other one and uh, put it in this and we'll get all the LEDs working, check all the motor direction, all that stuff. So we're getting close. Okay, we've got everything bound up and configured. I'll share uh, my dump uh, from this machine in the description, probably a link to my website uh, where you can get the full uh, dump of what I'm using on this. Um, but uh, yeah, so that will be there. Now we need to do the rest of the LEDs. So each of them, plug it in there, and plug it in there. And then what I like to do is to use my VHB, cut a very small piece, put it on the bottom of the LED, twist it a couple times to make that wire a little bit shorter and then stick it on the arm wherever you can. Try not to cover the USB port like I just did. And then repeat. Okay, all LEDs are installed. Before we put the cover on, let's just make sure that uh, all the LEDs are working. They should be, boom! green for days cool now we can put the uh, very top piece on just goes on it like that and then you just need four little zip ties for the arms which it comes with Okay, all those spin freely. Now for the props. It's all props out. The way I have it set up. And then the last bits of uh, screws are what that came with the motor. And voila, tiny trainer fully built. Um, first time, you, first couple times you put the battery in here, it's a very tight fit. Um, it kind of needs to be stretched out a little bit. And just make sure you don't push your camera tilt forward every time you plug it in. And then, uh, yeah, just bada bing bada boom. Should be good to go. Okay, and that's how you build your very own tiny trainer. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Really stoked with how these two bad boys turned out, except for these Pepto pink props. Um, yeah, I can't wait to go fly them. It just started raining outside, so I can't quite mate and test them yet. But when I do, I'll take you guys along for the ride. Um, so. Yeah, that's how you build your own tiny trainer. Thanks for watching. Thanks for checking out the flight footage, how to build all this stuff. Super stoked that you guys joined me for this video. I hope uh, that you learned how to build it, learned something else, how I build, anything like that. Um, please consider joining the channel as a member, um, subscribing, liking, all that good stuff. Really appreciate it. All the links below, I'll include uh, affiliate links so you can purchase any of this stuff um, and support the channel if that's how you choose to do that. In the meantime, Stay flying.